Hey, what's up guys? Totally Dubs here, and today I'm doing a video review on the AOC um, i one six zero one fwux What a mouthful. Now, this uh, monitor is a 15.6 uh, portable IPS monitor, and in case you're wondering, it's not that one, it's not the big one, it's the small one over here. Now, this monitor, in terms of its price, can be found for around £165 on Amazon.co.uk and around, a hun uh, around $195 in the US. Now, the monitor runs at a full HD 1920x1080 resolution at 60 Hz. It has a quoted response time of 5 milliseconds and it has a single USB Type-C input, which will transfer power and also transfer the um, display uh, input. Now within the package as well, uh, apart from the uh, USB-C to USB-C cable, you've got a very nice stand which I'm going to show you in just a bit. Now in terms of the monitor's design, I must say AOC have done a fantastic job in terms of um, how it looks. Now I'm just going to bring you guys closer to the monitor so you guys can see. You can see it's a very slender design. It looks really nice and can fit in pretty much any sort of laptop bag. It's also pretty much lightweight, um, so therefore you can take it around and carry it around pretty easily. Um, and just getting it uh, off its magnetic stand over here, you can see that uh, the magnetic stand actually holds pretty well. Now if I do do that, <laughs> it's going to fall off. Uh, but nevertheless, as you can see at the back of the monitor, it's got a nice, nice sort of silver design. In terms of um, the inputs, as I said, it's a single USB Type-C input over here, and it's got a single uh, button. Now, the button over here uh, is also used to switch on, but if you press it, you'll be, uh, access a uh, OSD. Now, the OSD over here, if you were to click it and then wait for it to select the brightness, for example, will launch you in terms of the um, the overall brightness. Now, the monitor has a um, kind of a, a tilt function. However, I did find, apart from right there, as you can see, um, it's uh, working. Um, what I did find is that you're going to need the software if you want it to run. Now the problem is finding that software is pretty hard um, unless you've got uh, the CD. Now the CD is over here which is great but as you can see I haven't even opened it. You might be wondering, well that's pretty obvious. You can't install the software um, if, and you can't comment on it if you haven't installed the software which is bundled with the monitor. I would agree other than the fact that this monitor is a USB Type-C um, monitor and now most modern days laptops like this 2300 pound Acer Predator uh, Triton 700 laptop doesn't even have a USB, uh, sorry, an a, a optical a drive. So in this modern era I would expect to download it and unfortunately from what I could find online um, which um, if I find um, uh, AOC's, uh, AOC's website over here you'll be able to find that there's only a driver installation rather than a software. The software is just missing from uh, AOC's website. A small thing but I'm sure they will uh, rectify it uh, after this video if not um, already rectified it uh, since um, until this goes live. Nevertheless. I just thought to mention that and I also quite like this little uh, cover because you can put it over the monitor itself and it protects the screen. Now the screen is not touch screen, I should, be, uh, should have mentioned that at the very beginning. It's something I did uh, wonder myself when I first got it uh, to see if it's actually a touch screen display. No, unfortunately not. It would have been cool if it was, um, although that might have added some uh, other complication, especially if you're going to be using it with like um, a Mac or something like that, which doesn't really uh, support touch screen, which is pretty crazy at this day and age. Anyway, so that's the build quality and the uh, little software things and the OSD that I just quickly mentioned. In terms of the OSD, you've got a few options. You've got brightness, contrast, overdrive, and a low blue light mode, which you can enable, and you can also change the language uh, local, uh, locale of the, um, of the monitor. Now you can see right now I have got the exact three images taken by me at the Taj Mahal and hopefully you'll be able to see the differences. Now just out the, just straight out what I can see from the, the camera itself, you can see that the big monitor which is an Acer monitor at the back is the brightest, then followed by the laptop, then followed by this. And very much with my own eyes you can tell the difference. It's no surprise given the fact that AOC have quoted the, the small monitor to have a 220 candela overall uh, max brightness. Now in all honesty that's not uh, that bright, uh, you'd want um, 
if you're using it in a bright sunlit room or like a very with, with like high ambient light around you, you get around you'd want around 300 to 350, which the the monitor and the laptop kind of well pretty much achieve that sort of level. So it's just something worth bearing in mind that if you're going to be taking it outdoors, then you might struggle to see it uh, in bright sunlight. However, I can see this being used mainly in an office uh, scenario, which will be perfectly acceptable. Some people might see it as a little bit of a dull monitor, but nevertheless, um, I, I find it's relatively acceptable. I would just like a little bit more, but you know, what can you ask for? Now, in terms of the uh, the, the monitor's um, color accuracy and whatnot, I must say, as its IPS screen, it's pretty impressive. It's not as quite as good as the two IPS screens which are present on the laptop and um, the monitor. If I just reduce the EV of my camera, you probably get a little bit more accurate uh, reproduction. Just bring you a little bit closer as well. I know it's Taj Mahal section over here, but as you can see over here, uh, the Taj Mahal on my Acer monitor, which is virtually stunning, you can see there's a very nice deep black on around the, uh, well, deep black, deep green around those little trees over here, and there's a very nice white point um, around Taj Mahal and a beautiful blue skyline. On the AOC monitor, however, it doesn't really come across perfectly uh, on my camera, but you've got more of like a, a, a washed out blue at the top. The Taj Mahal isn't white white, it feels a little bit, a um, little off center of white. Uh, and the green, uh, green over here are a little bit, a tad darker than they should be. In all honesty, the, the closest image that, that comes across is my Acer monitor, followed by the, the laptop and then uh, the small monitor. So, it's got a decent um, color reproduction and a decent contrast ratio uh, and, and generally um, it, it looks relatively good. It's just that when you compare it to class leading IPS panels uh, such as the Acer monitor or a very expensive laptop screen uh, on this IPS, the 120 hertz IPS screen on this Acer um, Predator monitor, um, uh, Predator laptop, sorry, then you can see the differences. It's like night and day differences. You can see it straight away. So. Overall, I would I, should I be complaining about this 160 pound monitor all that much, given the fact that once you've got a 3,000 well 2,300 pounds with 3,000 pound laptop and a 400 pound gaming monitor? Not really. I, I just just thought to comment on it just to be as 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 transparent and as um, as honest as possible. Now finally, it wouldn't be a totally dubbed review if I hadn't mentioned gaming, and I did put the overdrive on its strongest setting and launched up some Counter-Strike. Now the first thing I noticed was a heavy amount of input lag, now that can be due to the laptop given the fact it's connected via my mouse to my laptop, then from the laptop via USB Type-C to the monitor, and you can see Counter-Strike is running here. Now I'm just going to just, um, just quickly move around. Um, and you can see over here that the monitor um, works, but in all honesty, um, in all honesty with you, you can see even the input lag potentially being displayed even with my, uh, my mouse as I'm moving. It just takes some extra time to, um, to, to, to portray. So the input lag is relatively um, high. Um, and in terms of the response time monitor, um, in terms of its highest setting, it actually does a relatively good job uh, in terms of giving the fastest response time that it can do. Uh, but again, it's not going to be used for gamers. It's just something I thought I should mention and something that I would like to kind of um, uh, reference, uh, especially in terms of my review. So overall, what do I think of the monitor? Now, given the fact that the monitor is around £165, it's not all that expensive. Now you might say, oh, well I could get myself a nice 24 inch monitor, 27 inch monitor with an IPS display, fully adjustable stand and whatnot, even from AOC or Philips, uh, which is the sister company um, themselves. And that is all very much the case. And you know, you'd be, I'd be lying to say to you, those would be my options, that my go-to options. But in this case, you've got a portable solution, which none of these solutions in the background or the monitors um, that are in terms of its price range and offer the same sort of things will offer that portability. This on the other hand is a really nice portable uh, monitor, which you can literally unplug, store, and take around with you. It's that simple. And I really like that fact. And it's really light, it's nice, it looks cool, the design is cool, and you've got an included kind of um, arrest. So 
Overall, I would definitely recommend it if you're in the market for that type of monitor. Just bear that in mind. I wouldn't recommend it if you're going to be a, a gamer or if you're something who, someone who's looking to use it as their main monitor. But as a secondary external monitor to be used via USB Type-C, and you have to make sure you've got that USB Type-C connection, which my PC doesn't, but my laptop did. Well, my laptop, the, the laptop I've got on, on loan at the moment does. Then you will have this monitor as a fantastic external second monitor. So there we go guys, I've been totally dubbed. Hopefully you've enjoyed this review. Make sure you give it a like, comment, subscribe. Let me know in the comments below what you think of the monitor if you've got something similar. I'll be definitely interested to hear your thoughts. All right guys, I've been totally dubbed. Take care and bye-bye.